everyone. We're here with uh, Borough President, Manhattan Borough President Mark Levine. We're here on Summer Streets at 124th and Adam Clayton Powell. Uh, so really want to thank you for coming out today. Really want to appreciate everything you've done to make Manhattan a safer place to walk, bike, scoot. Uh, you know, everything that you've been doing on these fronts, both as a council member as well as now as a Borough President. We're here and we've got people all about. What's your initial reaction to this? I am blown away. I've never seen 125th Street this alive with people who are exercising, who are meeting neighbors, who are playing chess, batting practice. This space has come alive today. It is the best that I could have imagined for open streets uptown. Absolutely. So we were talking just a moment ago about when this first, as a program, a summer streets as a program, originated, and you were you said you were blown away as well when you first stepped foot on Park Avenue. Almost sounds like 15 years ago at this yeah. point. So what do you see as that evolution between then and now? So we've made a lot of changes as a city as a whole. Unless you've actually experienced open streets, it's hard for you to understand what it feels like to walk down, say, Park Avenue. In the middle of the street, in that canyon of plastic buildings, it's a whole different view on the city. It's really a whole different way of experiencing the city. And then when you have neighbors and friends and young people, people of all ages who are walking and jockeying, jogging and riding, the culture, it's um, really one of the most special experiences you can have in New York City. For too long, the only place you could have that experience in Manhattan was on the Upper East Side. And little by little, we're fixing that. Last year, we came all the way up to East Harlem, and that was a game change. It was extremely popular in the northern part of the route. This year, a whole new level. We are in the heart of Harlem, right here, 125th, Adam Clayton Powell. This really is the geographic, the emotional heart of Harlem. No surprise that so many people have come out today, but I'll tell you this. We're not done. We're not done. Okay. We are not done. So, so then what's your vision for what's next? Look, every time we've extended this route, it's just gotten better. It's brought new people in who might not have participated. You see more vibrancy, more diversity. We got to continue. Absolutely. Ultimately, I want the entire length of Manhattan covered. I want to go through to West Harlem, Washington Heights, Inwood. Those are neighborhoods that need this kind of open space where there's so many young people growing community of people who are riding bikes, uh, a need for activity and culture. You know, there are parts of the city where people on the weekends maybe go to the Hampton. Right. And they're doing fine. But that's not here. No. It's up, not, in, up, it's up not in Inwood. It's not in Washington. It's really it's not. Uptown, people are local. And so their chance for recreation, for community building, it's got to happen here in the city, and this is what we're doing today. It's really beautiful. Absolutely. You talk a lot about community building. Honestly, that's one of my favorite parts of both open streets generally as well as summer streets here. You know, you've seen a lot of people already in the 15 or so minutes that we've been here together. A lot of neighbors, a lot of community partners. What does that mean for New York coming out of the pandemic in this moment in time and, and how we see each other? Well, first, I just want to clarify that in the time I've been here, I have run into so many people who are from Harlem. Yeah. So if there's this image that it's not Harlem itself that's coming out today, right. I can tell you that is wrong. I've seen people I know from the neighborhood who've been stopping me. This is really great for uptown, for uptown itself. Totally. It's the beauty of an open street and extending it does bring out a new community. There's no doubt we need this more than ever. It's been a rough three years. People for a while had no human contact, at least not in person. And what you've got here, it is about recreation. People are moving and that's great. But there's also people who are just hanging out, right. talking to their neighbors, uh, enjoying the music, enjoying a game of chess, enjoying some food. And that's also beautiful. Even if they're not riding 100 blocks, they're getting to know people, they're seeing old friends. And that will benefit this community from a physical health, from a mental health, and even from a public safety perspective. Totally. So let's talk a little bit about that. Like, you know, the streets are clean today. That everything is is in order and everything. And from a public safety perspective, public space is public safety. And well-maintained public space and managed public spaces like that. How can we get that on a more consistent basis so that we have, you know, neighbors saying, I like my block. I you know, I like what I see around here across the borough. There's just no doubt that quality public space leads to safer neighborhoods yep. because it draws people out. You have more eyes on the streets. Mm -hmm. You have the safety that people feel when they're around their community. And also, when a street is clean, when it's well maintained, when right. you have nice, nice street trees, mm -hmm. it's like a psychological lift. Yes. It's actually been proven to impact mental health. And that, of course, yields benefits for safety. 
This has got to be part of the public safety conversation. Absolutely. These investments in quality open space and quality public space are good for environmental reasons and economic reasons, but also let's not forget they do make us safer. Absolutely. And so you mentioned economic reasons. I biked all the way from Brooklyn all the way up here on Electric City Bike. So you know I got a little title uh -huh. assist okay. there. But I kid you not, every single coffee shop along Park Avenue, from tip of, you know, below, at the very beginning of the Brooklyn Bridge, all the way up here, had people in it, had people packed, people were out and about, obviously using the space, but also using the rest, eating at restaurants and that. So let's talk a little bit about the economic benefit. What do you see for the potential there? Well, you're bringing thousands of people, maybe tens of thousands of people along the whole yeah. route, out on a Saturday morning. It's not prime time, this is not rush hour, these streets probably would not have had tens of thousands of people on them today. At all. And of course, people who walk shop, people who bike shop, yep. people who are out here listening to music, they're going to buy something from a local store or a restaurant. These are customers, among other things. And anecdotally, when I have talked to uh, coffee shops and restaurants uh, along these routes, they tell me that they're busier now than they would be on a regular Saturday morning. So there also is an economic benefit here that is sometimes lost or even distorted. Right. Um, there's this view that customers all drive up. Really, I think the customers of, of a cafe are not coming by car. They're walking They're local. Biking. Absolutely local. Seeing all of the different rest stops and all these different potential places people could enjoy their neighborhood and be local, especially I think as we talked about where they're at uptown here and they're staying local regardless. So this is just an added benefit for them. I'm curious, you know, we see a little girl here on her pink uh, bike uh, across the way. What's the impact on safety, especially for children? You know, it's a hard city to learn to ride a bike in yeah. because there are not a lot of vast, empty spaces. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of space to wobble. Sure, yeah, you know, you're in the suburbs or in rural areas, uh, there's nobody you have to worry about crashing into. Yeah. And I think what's happening here today is a lot of young people mm -hmm. are practicing riding a bike. I think there's even some formal training programs in some yes. locations. But right. Shout out to Bike New York with a lot of the work they're doing. Here's our, our friend here. There we go. Thank you, Bike here. She's still got training wheels. Yes. So, uh, obviously, uh, someone who's learning. And it's much better. Honestly, when I was teaching my kids to ride, they're now 20 and up. I wish I had something like this because it is stressful doing it on a city street yeah. when you have a little kid. So that's going to yield benefits beyond today. If some kids become confident and then can start riding under normal conditions, well, that's a, a benefit throughout the year. Totally. So uh, well, first, when you uh, right, right when you showed up, the mayor was leaving. So the mayor was enjoying his like, song here. Also, uh, batting practice also over here with some of the helmet fitting and. Uh, the SOMO station from the health perspective. We got a lot going on here. What would you tell the mayor about uh, your experience with Summer Streets and sort of the validation perhaps of his decision to extend it to Harlow? And that, you know, the political will that it takes, but also the budgetary allocation. Yes, well, uh, I don't have to tell the mayor because he was just here. Totally. And he saw the vibrancy, the energy, the crowds here up in Harlem. And I really want to thank him for making this extension. Absolutely. These things are never easy. Yep. Always a little bit of political complication. Every extension comes with that. And there's also resources on the table. To do this right, mm -hmm. you can't just open a street and walk away. Absolutely. You've got to have some staffing, some programming. And so that does require spending some money. I am quite convinced that we gain more economically and in other intangible ways than we're putting in. Yeah. But these are tight times on the budget, so good for him for making that call to come uptown. And I hope we'll do it uh, even bigger and better next year. All right, so you know we see this uh, as a at least in Manhattan for three Saturdays. We see a lot of children out and about, you know, obviously using the space here, biking, learning to ride, uh, but generally using public space. How can we make it safer around schools on a day to day or from an infrastructure perspective? Well, we can do this kind of thing uh, in miniature yes. all the time and all over. And we are doing it more and more. And we have to continue to push to use this precious space, every inch of which uh, we're going to fight over how to use, let's yeah. be honest. But to rebalance so that we have more recreational opportunities, more opportunities for human powered mobility, right. more opportunities for community building on the streets, and it works. 
it works. We're seeing it here, and this is, uh, I think, proof of concept of what we can do in more places, uh, more times in the year throughout the borough and city. Yeah, I love the proof of concept idea. I think sometimes, I, for me as an advocate, it's hard to say to someone that doesn't experience this before, this is what it could be like. Yeah. They haven't heard the music, they haven't heard the sound of the bat in the background, you know, they haven't, they haven't had that uh, emotional experience. Yeah. So I, I think the proof of concept is a great framing for what the experience is like. Um, so, you know, we're looking big picture and we're on the cusp of congestion pricing. Right. We're on the cusp of big changes as right. a city and as a borough specifically. What do you think the role of congestion pricing will play in how our physical space can change in the congestion pricing zone, but even beyond it, if we can make different choices around bus lanes and bus ways, we make different choices about bike lanes and the way that we allocate space for people rather than, say, for vehicles. Well, we have two really severe crises facing mobility in yeah. New York City. One is uh, chronically underfunded mass transit. Totally. A system that needs upgraded stations for elevators, that needs upgraded signaling so we have fewer delays. That's very old rail cars that need to be replaced. Same with two buses as well. Right. We have a second problem on the street, yes. which is choking level of congestion in Midtown, downtown Manhattan, that is yeah. now producing um, bus speeds in those areas. Well, any vehicle speeds slower than walking going right. across town at times. Slowing ambulance response, fire, emergency response time, extremely dangerous. and a terrible economic impact as well. We're going to be able to address both of those challenges with congestion pricing. And I think it's also, there are other benefits when we have less congestion. Mm -hmm. Air quality improves, uh, safety improves, people are just statistically less likely to be in a crash. Um, but it also opens up opportunities for recreation if you're not at choking levels of congestion. Right. And we've seen this in other cities. It'll make it easier to do what you see here on more days and more places. The upside of that kind of being lost in the very intense debate right now, right. but congestion is a bad thing. And when you reduce congestion, all sorts of wonderful possibilities emerge. Mm -hmm. And this right here shows us what is possible. Exactly. And I think, you know, we see, for example, already the changes in the 14th Street busway a few years ago and what that physical infrastructure change and reducing congestion has done down there by Union Square and across town. I was up on the Clean Air Green border, which is on 182nd Street in Washington Heights. Right. And there's the 181st Street busway. Yeah. You know, it was like, it was magic. Literally, it was only buses and a few vehicles turning on, and this is the future of our city. And I think we are really on the cusp of that really almost floodgate change for that. So I think it's really exciting, particularly for Manhattan as a borough and what that means for people's mobility options. T totally agree. I mean, 14th Street's been an incredible success for bus riders yeah. who now can speed along. It's much more heavily used now because buses move more quickly. Right. But it's also had positive spillover effects in the surrounding neighborhoods. Union Square now has really benefited um, from having a healthier 14th Street. And we do have to do more, I think, to kind of improve the physical infrastructure of 14th Street, more pedestrian improvements, more greenery, um, but we're really moving in the right direction there. And it, again, proof of concept. Exactly. It proves that with a, a new vision, you really can change the way people move in this city and it gives me great hope for the future. I love that. I like the way that you use the word vision. I think one of the things we appreciate about you is your vision and your vision Bush as a council member as well as the borough president. So, you know, on the mobility front, you had vision to suggest that on the West Side Highway, we should also have protected infrastructure there. And we know that people are more likely to walk, bike, you know, take, you know, mass transit when it's fast, when it's efficient, and when it's safe. So what's your vision or that protected infrastructure, either there or across the borough? Well, we can't just make the changes of the coming months uh, sticks. We right. need some carrots. We need to make it easier for New Yorkers to get where they're going mm -hmm. without having to pay the congestion charge. And one place that we need to make it easier is the west side, yeah. where the Greenway, wildly successful, almost a victim of its success because it's now the most heavily used greenway in the country. It's crazy. And and it's, it's become, at peak times, it becomes uncomfortable yes. for everybody, for people who are on foot or are on bike. And we just need to allow people to spread out a little bit more mm -hmm. and to separate out people who are on foot right. from people who are on wheels. And we can do that 
because we do have a very wide highway there. And my vision is to take one lane of that and use it for probably e-mobility or other vehicles that are faster moving, right. get them totally out of the greenway. And I think we can do that because there will be less vehicle traffic once the congestion charge totally. uh, goes into place. And these things are, they're, they're intertwined. If you create more good opportunities to safely travel without needing a private car, then more people will, which right. creates more space, Precisely. which makes it easier to do innovation. And so we got to push a little bit. We're having conversations with the state department of transportation. Okay. People might not realize that looks like a city street is controlled by the right. state. And so um, it's all about uh, what the leadership in Albany decides, mm -hmm. but we're having very good conversations so far. I'm optimistic, but we're still pushing. Absolutely. I mean, you, I thought you were going to use honestly the word cascading or snowballing. Oh, that's, there you go. No, no, but but I think everything that you said is very accurate. And when I appreciate it as well, you mentioned the word comfort and my colleague Carl talks a lot about comfort for biking and thinking about who is biking. So, you know, how do we make it comfortable for say young children or for mothers or caretakers with someone on the back of their cargo bike or seniors for that matter, uh, you know, using our current mobility infrastructure? Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to ride in traffic. It's hard to ride a bicycle in traffic yeah. for anybody. And that's why it does tend to be kind of younger people, right. or, uh, maybe our veteran riders. But to ride on a street like this, that's a whole nother experience. Yeah. You do feel safe. Right. Um, to ride in the protected bike line, bike lane also gives you that benefit. And we have more and more and more miles of that being rolled out, thank goodness. And yeah. that's drawing in a new group of people who are not going to ride in traffic.